morning. Uh, my name is Abid Faruqi, and I'm also an ophthalmic pathology and research fellow with the Mammoth and Warner Lab. Uh, thank you to my colleagues for giving us such a fascinating talk on intraocular lenses. I hate to break the trend, but I'm going to be talking about another subject that I've become very intimately involved with as a member of the ACS ASCRS Forum Task Force, uh, Toxic Anterior Segment Syndrome. So I'll start off with a case presentation and talk about um, what TAS is, the di causes, diagnosis, treatment, and how we can kind of uh, assess the outcomes of uh, TAS. So we have a case, uh, case report from the VA hospital in Indiana in which five men ages 64 through 81 years underwent a clear coronial incision, fecal emulsification surgery with the insertion of an Alcon SN60WF lens. Uh, there was significant past medical history in four out of the five men for <coughs> hypertension and diabetes. However, none of them had any significant ocular history. All surgeries had uh, were similar in respect to the cataract densities, the amount of energy dissipated during the procedures, and the length of the surgery itself. Uh, all medications and solutions used were the same for each surgery, and there were no recent changes to any medications or surgical procedures or surgical equipment at the VA facility. On post-operative day one, all patients had a diffuse one plus to two plus corneal edema, a two plus to four plus anterior chamber uh, white blood cells. Two of the patients had hypopion and fibrin, uh, fibrin formation in the anterior chamber, and none of the patients complained of ocular pain. Visual acuity ranged from 2070 to 2400, and all patients had normal intraocular pressures. These patients were felt to have a diagnosis of toxic anterior segment syndrome and were treated accordingly. So I'll refer to toxic anterior segment syndrome as TAS now, and TAS is a sterile inflammation of the anterior segment following any anterior segment surgery. Most commonly, this uh, complication of arises after cataract surgery. However, any anterior segment surgery can result in TAS, such as a glaucoma surgery or a corneal transplant. Uh, presentation of the symptoms of TAS generally occur within 12 to 48 hours postoperatively with the majority of the patients presenting within the first 24 hours. The pathophysiology of this process is thought to be an activation of the inflammatory cascade mediated by a toxic insult that enters the anterior segment of the eye, either during or immediately after the surgery. This inflammatory cascade causes, the toxic uh, substance is, um, is damaging to the corneal endothelium and other sensitive tissues in the anterior segment of the eye. Uh, causing uh, corneal edema from the damaged corneal endothelium, endothelium. Also, the trabecular meshwork and the iris are also sensitive structures in the eye for uh, increasing the risk of glaucoma or other iris defects. The prognosis of the, of the inflammation and this uh, cascade, this cascade varies depending on the amount and the type of substance that enters the anterior segment, how long that substance is within the anterior segment and how long before treatment is initiated. So some of the symptoms that patients will come into the clinic presenting with are blurred vision, conjunctival injection, and photophobia. However, pain is usually absent and this will be helpful in distinguishing TAS from another very critical diagnosis, which I will discuss in a few minutes. Uh, some of the signs on, on slit lamp examination is this characteristic limbus to limbus corneal edema. Uh, you'll see increased cell and flare in the anterior chamber. You'll also possibly see hypopion formation and uh, fibrin formation, and a dilated or irregular pupil and increased intraocular pressure. These last two are more commonly seen with more severe cases of TAS. However, it is also likely that um, uh, patients will present with some of these findings. And just a quick note on the increased intraocular pressure. Usually most patients will have normal pressures upon presentation but as the healing process resumes, their pressures will increase. However, some patients will present with a more severe case with damage to the trabecular meshwork already, and will have uh, intraocular pressures up to 50 to 60. So here are some of the pictures of the findings that I was just discussing. You'll have a diffuse limbal to limbal corneal edema. On the left, you see this increased conjunctival injection with the hypopion uh, on the, in the anterior chamber. This last picture is a picture of a severe case of TAS in which there's iris atrophy with a thick, dilated, uh, irregularly shaped uh, pupil and uh, 
iris stroma uh, defect allowing for trans illumination of the iris. It's difficult to see here, but the haptics are, visual, are able to be visualized through the iris. So one of the distinguishing uh, diagnoses that is very important to rule out when thinking of PATH is infectious endophthalmitis. So this chart right here is to help distinguish some of the main uh, differences between the two entities. One of the first I want to draw your attention to is the onset of symptoms. In PATH, this generally occurs very acutely within 12 to 48 hours. However, in infectious endophthalmitis, it takes a little bit longer, usually two to seven days postoperatively. And uh, even the most virul virulent strains of bacteria won't result in symptoms until a few days after. Uh, the cor corneal edema um, is limbus to limbus, and I hate to sound repetitive, but it's very uh, characteristic in PATH. In infectious endophthalmitis, you might have focal edema or none at all. And in the anterior segment inflammation, it's, it's generally a little bit more, more severe in infectious endophthalmitis with greater hypopion size inflammation. And also, as I mentioned earlier, the pain. Usually with infectious endophthalmitis, you'll have the majority of patients complaining of pain, whereas the opposite is true of PATH. And if there's, any ever, if there's ever any uh, uncertainty about the diagnosis of PATH, obtaining a gram stain and culture, uh, obtaining aqueous and viscous fluid for a gram stain and culture and, uh, is very imp important in ruling out uh, infectious endophthalmitis. So here are some of the findings uh, characteristic of infectious endophthalmitis. The conjunctival injection is much greater. There isn't a diffuse limbal to limbal corneal edema. However, there is greater hypopion. And then also the visualization of the posterior pole will be obscured by uh, opacification of the vitreous. So moving on to the causes of PATH, given that the causes of PATH are, are numerous and varied, there needs to be an evaluation of all surgical procedures and protocols when a case of PATH arises. To simplify, I'll break down, I'll categorize the causes of PATH in two of the more common causes. Intraocular medications and solutions can uh, commonly cause PATH. Uh, balanced salt solutions, any solutions used in the eye can cause PATH if there is an irregular uh, pH uh, measurement, um, ionic composition is off, or even or if there's some contamination within the solution. More commonly, topical uh, ophthalmic drops that contain preservatives and stabilizing agents are damaging to the corneal endothelium, uh, which is very sensitive to these agents. And that's more one of the more common causes of PATH. Uh, epinephrine that's added to DSS during the surgery to help with pupil dilation commonly contains stabilizing agents um, like bisulfites and metasulfites or preservatives like benzalkonia chloride. And these will are very toxic to the corneal endothelium. Also, I just want to bring your attention to OVDs, uh, ophthalmic viscosurgical devices, which are toxic in and of themselves if they're left in the eyes, but they're also, uh, there's also a chance that if the surgical equipment used is not cleaned properly, that they may retain some in the lumen. And upon subsequent surgical procedures, these can be released into the anterior chamber, chamber of the eye, causing, uh, causing an inflammatory reaction. One of the other major causes of PATH that was noted to be uh, one of the most common causes during a 2006 six PATH outbreak in North America was the cleaning and sterilization of instruments. Uh, this includes reusable cannulas and hand pieces um, and also talks about the enzymes and detergents and ultrasound baths. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, these lumens of these hand pieces may have retained cortical material or uh, dried OVD that is not uh, removed sufficiently. Uh, through the sterilization process, these, are, these persist and allow for further contamination in, in subsequent surgeries. The enzymes and detergents are also noted to not be necessary given that the bio burden d accumulated on these equipments during the procedure itself is not so great compared to other uh, general surger surgical techniques and instruments. Therefore, the toxicity of the enzymes and deter detergents, if not rinsed away properly, uh, will create more problems than, uh, than, they, than they help. And ultrasound baths, similarly, are not necessary given the low bio burden uh, during, uh, say, during cataract surgery. And these have a tendency to get contaminated with gram-negative bacteria, producing endospores that are not um, 
better not be nurtured during a sterilization. And finally, poorly constructed wounds can also cause, uh, sub allow for substances to enter the anterior segment during uh, surgery and after surgery. So treatment, as I mentioned, prevention is the best form of treatment. So that making sure that surgical procedures and protocols that are adhered to uh, strictly is the best way to avoid a, a complication of PATH. However, if there is a complication of PATH, you'd want to immediately treat them to reduce the inflammatory response. Removing any residual material that may be causing the toxic insults is necessary, but then the medical treatment is generally a topical prednisolone acetate, 1% every one hour, with close observation and follow-up uh, to visualize improvement of the inflama inflammation in the anterior chamber and also to make sure that intraocular pressures are maintained. And then it's also important to analyze the outbreak. Uh, ASCRS has created an ad hoc task force that will help analyze any of these uh, outbreaks or paths. It's, uh, it's readily available on a website that I'll be mentioning soon. And just going to the prognosis and outcomes of paths, usually mild, most cases of paths are mild, and there'll be re resolution of the anterior segment inflammation and corneal edema within days to weeks with no uh, residual sequelae. More moderate paths, there's a little bit longer uh, time to, for resolution of the corneal edema and the anterior segment inflammation. Some will have mild residual corneal edema, most will resolve completely, and these, uh, this group is more susceptible to elevated intraocular pressure increases. And in severe paths, there's permanent damage to the anterior segment of the eye. You'll have persistent corneal edema, uh, possible cystoid macular edema, iris atrophy, like that thick dilated pupil that we saw in the picture with the thinned iris stroma, and uh, severe glaucoma that is difficult to treat medically and will usually require some surgical intervention. And rarely these uh, severe TAS cases will require systemic medical treatment. So in summary, if you see a, a patient with diffuse limbal to limbal corneal edema arising 12 to 48 hours post uh, anterior segment surgery, think of TAS. However, it's imperative to rule out infectious endophthalmitis, and also initiate treatment immediately and monitor closely for any progression of the disease. And also, it's uh, important to analyze the outbreak. If you have a TAS outbreak, there's a, a standardized protocol and survey that is available on the ASCRS website that will allow you to receive um, receive advice on an evaluation on what may be causing the TAS by a task created uh, task force. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, I will be one of those individuals this year that would uh, help to analyze the outbreak as, as is our Dr. Mamu. Here are my references and thank you for listening.
Dr. Ramos would have a better understanding of yeah, what yeah. 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 Thank you.